Uh, we're recording. Uh, hello, and welcome to the Brothers Geek Podcast. Uh, haven't done this in a while. It's, uh, we're Brothers Geeks. We talk about geeky things. Wait, no, I'm not supposed to say that yet. I'm supposed to say, uh, we're the, we're the Smallest Brothers. You're supposed to say. Jeez, no, you're so uh, no, I'm supposed to say that after I introduce you guys. Uh, That's not true. That's my not name, true. My name is, even... my, my name is Patrick Schwaltz. Uh, we're recording. Uh, Have, having a baby has destroyed half your brain cells? Yes, I only had half the brain cells before, and now all yeah. the brain cells are dead. And um, um, yeah. so... Patrick, episode 172. <laughs> That's right. One, episode 172, uh, recording on June 18th. Uh, my name is Patrick Schmaltz with my two brothers, uh, Christopher Schmaltz. Hello, Christopher. Hello. And then uh, my other brother, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Hi, that's me. Uh, I'm here, too. Yeah, we're brothers, we're geeks. We talk about geeky things. That's that's when I'm supposed to say that. See? Yeah, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> we haven't recorded yeah. in a while because I had a baby. Sorry about that. Uh, you you know, didn't have a baby, actually. I had a baby. I get, uh, you, you did not squeeze out a baby. I mean, No. You are now a father. You're, but but we're supposed you're... to we're supposed to say we're supposed to say that though, right? That's like the Who's, PC oh, says. No, 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 no. You did not That's, have a baby. That we had a baby. She had a baby, and then I'm I was just you, there. You were yeah. You, you were there. The, I, I, don't, the, I don't. I don't. Med, I don't I, medically I, speaking, I, Hannah went yeah, through labor, yeah. and you watched. I don't know what to do with my it's, hands. It's, what do I do with my it? hands? Yeah. So. It's the imprecision of Eng, the English language because the word had suggest that you produced it but you uh-huh. did not produce it i mean it it, it 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 wouldn't have existed without my my seed if you will if we're, if we're arguing semantics here so uh we are we're being very you're pedantic paying, you're not paying attention <laughs> because had, had and i didn't say that you produced a baby because then yeah that suggests that you had a hand in well, producing it but you're, no what you're you, arguing what you're you arguing is the word what you're arguing is the word had only some indicates the person who gave us, labor to the child. I had some, some, because some I have, have a baby years. now. I possess a baby now, so I had a baby. That's some, <laughs> some, of us, some of us write for a living, so you did not have is, a baby. This is the some worst. of us write for a living. You're yes, really the you're worst really... conversation we've ever had in the history of the podcast. <laughs> we've had some bad ones. This is this is okay. This is, this we is have the no bottom of the we barrel. have no time to dawdle. We have had two months. I have a crazy list. I'm just gonna start firing them at you. Okay, stop, you guys ready stop. for this? You're you're coming in very hot and you're shouting and it's. I don't great. care. He got me excited. It's his fault. It's his fault. Okay. So okay. so uh Toki always like <laughs> it's energy now. dude bring it it's, bring it hot i bring okay. i bring the deep intellectual thought you guys can bring the shoutiness wow i don't, I don't wow. shout okay yeah i am gonna turn myself down a little bit since you're saying that uh-huh hey you understand quality 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 yeah. recording quality yeah. recording quality uh okay my, uh, in hot. My, Andrew's concerned about us coming in hot. What do you think, <laughs> listener? Are you concerned about write us to, coming write in to, hot? Write to Andrew about us coming in hot. Uh, Andrew, ha- Andrew hashtag hashtag us coming in hot. <laughs> coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, hashtag coming in hot. Andrew. Uh, so Tokyo Vice. Uh, we talked about. No, Tokyo I still, Vi- I still haven't watched it. Tokyo oh! Vi- Tokyo Vice, I watched. I was. I talked about a bunch on the last podcast. So if you were listening back to back, Tokyo Vice, awesome show. Watch it. It's freaking great. Uh, I agree. I concur. I concur. He, he concurs. Okay, so Andrew hasn't watched it. So we're just gonna watch leave, it. We're gonna leave it at that. Renewed for season two. Very exciting. Oh, oh that's cool. Renewed. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Renewed for season two. So, so in the time that we've uh, recorded it's, this, it's on an actual book. Oh, based on an actual book by by guys' experiences in Tokyo uh, as a as like a vice reporter for the yeah like Tokyo Underworld type stuff, right? Oh yeah, it's yeah. really really good, really good. Nice. Uh, nice. Well yeah. Moon Knight, we were in the middle of Moon Knight last time we recorded. It finished. Uh, did you guys come around at all on Moon Knight? Uh, no, not really. Kind of, I've kind of forgotten about. It. I thought it was a good quality series, and Oscar Isaac is great, but I've 
largely forgotten about it, honestly. Um, I, I, it's a meh, it's a meh for me. Meh. I, I really liked it. I think it's a bit of a meh, but I think it's a little bit higher in the, the rung of meh because Oscar Isaac is so good and because of the crazy kaiju battle at the end of the spoiler oh, yeah. alert. Yeah, I, it's, awesome. It's kaiju. a lot of fun. I yeah, just didn't get invested. Yeah. I didn't get invested. And it's, I mean, it's a perfect star vehicle. Oscar Isaac is one of the best actors working. He wanted to do superhero stuff, you know, and he did a, a great superhero it, show, but it's, definitely it is, more, it's more not going to endure. It's more complex than your standard sort of superhero tale. So yeah. it, fits, it fits with him perfectly. So all, I agree on all of that. Yeah. Um, and it's also still a mess. Also, yeah, still... also kind of a meh. Like, I would say, well, I mean, maybe I'll talk about this because there's another, a couple other, like, Disney Plus shows that are on my list. But I'll, I'll say from... this. I'll Mar- say this about oh. Disney Plus, the, yeah. the Marvel Disney Plus stuff. There are other, th- and I'm this is how I'm kind of gauging things right now in terms of quality. Would I rewatch it? Like, rewatchability yeah. is kind of my like scale right now on quality of stuff. What I would watch many other Disney Plus Marvel shows before I would watch Moon Knight again. I think it's a little higher up. It's a little higher on my list than than that for me. Like I liked it a little more than you guys, but I also What what's your what's your favorite of the Disney Plus shows then? What's the top right now? I think it's honestly I think it's still WandaVision. I, I think, think WandaVision it, is so good. I think Loki for me. I thought Loki was the the strongest series. It was so interesting and weird and I uh, think I like WandaVision more maybe because of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Because uh, I I just want more That's that's on my Elizabeth, list. Elizabeth Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff. Right. I, she's just so good. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh uh I don't disagree with that, but I will say this and uh uh, is the first three episodes of WandaVision like rewatchability are pretty weak because it's like there that doesn't move the story along. It doesn't get good until you start to like break down the walls a little bit and you start getting outside the bubble a little bit. And then I think I think it sort of like starts off weird and strong, and then the middle parts are really good, and then the end of WandaVision is just like See, a freaking Marvel like superhero battle in space, and it's just like. I... Okay. I really dug the first three episodes because it. I loved the weirdness. I loved the fact weird, that it was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so weird, and it was so different than other superhero stuff we've watched that yeah. Marvel's produced. The yeah. weirdness of it is really what sucked me in. Actually, I yeah. love that first hour and a half of WandaVision. Loved well, it, and, and that's and that's why I like Loki because it's so strange and different and uh, has a unique story to tell. Anyways, continuing, I fell off on Picard. I watched videos of the like last three episodes because I, I it was so it. bad. It was so I didn't bad. Yeah, season two, Picard. We're not even going to waste even, time. My my love, not even my love of Patrick Stewart could. Keep me to have me finish that series. Dude, it was so dumb. Episodes. That show well, was so dumb. I watched it hoping that it would pay off, and it it doesn't pay off. It doesn't pay off. Not uh, worth it. Uh, Doctor Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness came out since we started recording, uh, or uh, in between. Uh, I mean, we didn't really talk about it. Like, what do you guys think of Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness? You just said a little bit about from WandaVision. There is a big connection to WandaVision and it's been yeah. out for weeks now so I feel like you can, can say spoil the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you if you're worried about spoilers, there are some big spoilers um from this. So I love I love Wanda as the vision and I love her like single-mindedness. She wants this power that's kind of forbidden to her and she's willing to do anything she can do to get it. Uh I Benedict Cumberbatch as Stephen Strange is really not that compelling to me. Um, the what? I've seen the original Doctor Strange movie once. I've never had the need to rewatch it. He's good in Infinity War. You know, he's got a big part of Infinity War. But as for Steve, as a as a character, I'm not really that interested in Stephen Strange. He doesn't. He doesn't. Ma- he doesn't like. Oh, you freeze. You froze a little. You guys still character oh. and how shit. I think. Re, 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 re say that because you froze you froze for me what's that we lost you you, you lost froze you, you froze mid thing so yeah. just say say that again oh you're freezing again right. tell 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 ashen to stop streaming stuff she's uh, not she's just sitting on her phone on her on her couch right now great uh right. okay so um so Dr. I will Strange. say, oh yeah, I, uh, I your, have, your problem I, is Benedict Cumberbatch. You're saying you didn't buy into him. I, I no. think, I think that, uh-huh. I think he's pretty good. 
in the first movie and likable. And I think that the part of the reason why this movie is a meh for me, lots of fun and beautiful, but I think that people phoned in performances like hardcore, like, or like they didn't make Doctor Strange like charismatic at all. And that really kind of made it, well, made it middle the rung for me instead of like being great. So I don't think Doctor Strange is a very charismatic character. Like he doesn't engender a lot of affection in my opinion. I just don't, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I have much more, I have much more kind of affection and interest in Wanda Maximoff than I which, do in Steve which, Strange. Which I kind of hated what they did to her character and felt very unmotivated for her, her being this villain, which they could have made her be a very, um, the most amazing villain from this hero turned villain. And I feel like her motivations were so just left field and in. Uh, I totally in, bought it. And in, in opposition to what happened in WandaVision. Like, oh my God. No, no, it's a follow-up to It's WandaVision. totally a follow-up. I bought into that journey 100%. 100%. Wow, you guys are both like, I, I guess I'm the outlier here because that, um, that movie is top 10% of all Marvel movies. Wow. Really? You know why? Because it's not your standard sort of uh, superhero movie, A. Yeah. Doctor Strange is t- Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange is super compelling to me, mm-hmm. uh, and I love Sam Raimi and his style, and I'm so happy that Marvel let him inject his style into that movie. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree with I, I agree with that. I, I love the multiverse stuff, and I just I loved the 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 comic bookiness of the multiverse and the Illuminati and that scene yeah. is just so it it made me so happy um that they like just went all in on the multiverse stuff. I just I I love the movie. I love the fact that it her Wanda's powers were clearly on display. Yeah. And she is unbelievably she was, just, she was far more compelling for me than Stephen Strange was. That's all. And I, I, I enjoyed it. But is it a, you know, is it kind of in my, will it be in my normal rotation of rewatched Marvel movies? Probably not. Mm-hmm. That's all. Um, it will be on regular rotation for me because it's so different. I, 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 that's now that I completely legit. I yeah, love I, WandaVision so much and it builds on WandaVision and yeah. her character arc is awesome. Yes, I, I will. I, I will. I will say that now that you're talking about this, Christopher, as soon as it's on Disney Plus, I want to rewatch it again. Yeah. Like, like it, it, I think that like well, I think I will, but yeah. I just won't. It won't be like I mean, I can I can sit down and watch The Winter Soldier. Yeah, pro- once a month. Oh you know, yeah, that kind of rewatchability. Winter, I can watch Winter Soldier is I, like the best. It's still the best. I, so I can watch or once a month. I can watch even. I could probably even watch. Um, I can watch all of the Avengers movies once a month, even Infinity War, which is hard for me to watch because it, I don't like watching my heroes lose as badly. They, as they lose. They, I mean, they spoiler lose. alert: they lose. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's, anyway. let's move on. Okay, so like sort of middling different different aspects on Doctor Strange, uh, House of the Dragon trailer. I wrote this out. I'm going in just down the list. So if there's any uh, weirdness, um, it's because this is linear. This is happening as as things happened house of the dragon trailer are you guys excited about this i was really disappointed with game of thrones ending andrew still loves game of thrones i think and isn't pissed about it but uh what thoughts i mean i'll watch anything that's set in the game of in the song of ice and fire universe so i don't need a trail trailer for me to watch the show i will watch the show okay okay Um, that's that's right i will I, the only thing, and just because my expectations, I wanted, when I heard they were doing prequel stuff, like telling Targaryen prequel stories, yeah. uh, this particular story is, there's a lot of interesting, dynamic characters um, that are going to be very fun to watch if they do them right. Like, the fact that, the fact that there's a, there's a family that, ex- if they follow what's in uh fire and blood like the targaryen history textbook essentially if they follow kind of the story of it the 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 high tower family that rules old town 
that's not a factor at all in Robert's Rebellion and the story that we watched with A Game of Thrones, the TV show. Yeah. The fact that they're not part of that and how they, what the, the, the actions they take in the Targaryen Civil War, because one of the main players is a Hightower and her family fights a, kind of against the Targaryens and you can kind of imply like what happens there. But she, Millicent Hightower and her father are very interesting characters, as well as Rhaenyra Targaryen, the queen who wants to seize the throne for herself, and her husband, is she, uh, Damon, is she a... Damon Targaryen, played by Matt Smith, who is the most interesting Targaryen who ever lived. Is that in this book, Andrew? There's That's some the... of it in that book, but you're, I'll, here, I'll get the book and show it to you. Okay. I was just going to ask him, now he doesn't have headphones, I'll just wait, I guess, but I was going to ask him, um, uh, like, is the, is who, the Targaryen he's talking about, is she the little girl? I don't know. Is, is, and, Andrew, it, yeah. Andrew, 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 put your headphones back on. Uh, is, is the, the, the queen, like, like, Targaryen you're talking about, is that that little girl in the trailer? They're good, well, they're going to tell... She gets she gets named the heir apparent when she's like ten, uh, and then her there's a whole bunch of things that political, you know, palace intrigue stuff happens. But she gets named she does the the king Viserys her father names her as the heir apparent, and it's been the car it's been the Targaryen tradition always to the oldest living male relative to the to the king inherits the son or the brother usually uh -huh, the son. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But, fact that he names his firstborn daughter to be his heir is a big deal and then things happen and change and people try to seize power but she's she has been trained since she was a child to rule she's not like an exile she's not like danny who's across the sea and in exile she hey, has been raised by a su successful king that's the king focus of the show her heir. That's what's the that focus of the show rhaenyra targaryen is a main character yes so that will be it'll be interesting to see a Targaryen, who has been like, this is when the Targaryens are legitimately at their most powerful. Like they have, there's 20 dragons, there's 15 members of the family. They're, you know, they rule Westeros completely. You know, it's always a power struggle, but it will be interesting to see that because these are legitimately. We, I mean, you get it a little bit with Danny in Game of Thrones. These are a group of people, a family that believes they are superior to all other humans in this world because they can ride dragons hmm. they they have inherent blood magic so they are they're more than men but less than gods is like what targaryens think about themselves wow so yeah and That's... they have a whole whole family of them all dragon riders rule you know ruling a kingdom for 150 years by this point it's gonna be crazy good uh Ho okay. hopefully Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, okay, uh, skipping ahead here. Uh, we we watched The Great Season 2. Awesome. If you haven't watched The Great on Hulu, really good series. Uh, season. I, 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 I'm tired of that show, so I, I did not finish Season 2 because I, I want them to get on with it. I'm, t I'm sick of the characters. And oh, I, really? I know, the his I know the history, so uh, I'm like, oh, uh, God, it's, yeah, so. Okay, never mind. Uh, the Wilds season two. We watched The Wilds on Prime, and it's like a bunch of teenage girls crash land on an island, and there's there's more to it than that. But uh, is, it, is it worth watching? I've I've been tempted watch, to start. This. Watch the first watch the first couple episodes and see. It is a little bit teeny bopper. That season one is like what? But uh, I I Hannah and I what liked is, it. We always binge watch it, and it's. I always, uh, all of those, that genre is always compared to Lost for me. And yes, so, yes. what does it do different from Lost? Uh, is it, is it more, is it more Lord of the Flies? But, yeah, but, it's, it's more Lord it, of the Flies, and it has yeah. more to ask, and there's answers to the questions. There, Lost? Uh, you, you guys no, are misremembering no. Lost. I'm, I'm not sorry. misremembering Lost. Lost, Lost didn't know what the fuck it was doing. It just had questions and no answers, bro. Lost what is a great show. What, the, what is the obsession with people needing, like, 
<laughs> it was a crazy mystery show where it had no answers. I love you need a seven, you need a seven season you... plot before you even shoot one episode. No, Andrew, no. Andrew, 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 why, why are you, dude? I am a. I love Lost. I have yeah. never lost my love of Lost. Lost is an incredible show. Yes, it is. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I am so this in I the the fanboy obsession with you know payoff immediate payoff that I've been engaging with on the internet because of Kenobi over the past few weeks. Oh, we're not Ooh. talking about Kenobi. We're, I mean, it's, we'll, we'll, it's, we'll do a one shot it, on Kenobi. It's, it's down here on the list, but maybe we should do it. We'll skip ahead. We're gonna to do a one shot. We're okay. gonna do a one shot on. All right, Kenobi all right, all right. Done. So okay, continue continuing. Uh, the everything everywhere all at once. Did you see this, Andrew? I haven't seen it. That's the best movie I've seen this year. Holy shit! Is it good? It's amazing. It is the best movie. I, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. It is. I need to. I need to watch it. It just slips you, through my fingers. It if is. You're a, you're a movie person, Andrew. You have to see it. It, it is, is absolutely bonkers. It, it is. is so creative, yes. so entertaining, incredible performances, incredible visuals. It is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Well, and okay. it's it's getting like it's one of A24's like highest grossing movies ever and it's been it's been just it, it's I hope it gets nominated for a bunch of stuff. It's like that weird thing where it's like right in the middle of the year, so it might not it might get skipped. I hope not. It was amazing. It was like it is incredible. Yeah, yeah okay. go go see every everything everywhere all at once. Uh, Avatar or the trailer for Avatar and the Way of Water. What do you guys think of this? Haven't yeah. seen it. Okay, it well was, it, it was uh, before it was before Doctor Strange so, when so I saw it. Here, here, here's I want to like Avatar last Airbender. Dude. Avatar the of the big blue people. Big Avatar. blue people. Yes. Yes. Nah, well, I, I that I I'm a fan of that movie. The the technical achievement of putting all of that water on screen has got to be incredible. The computing power yeah. has got to be incredible. What they're throwing at it, I'm excited to see the visuals of it. But if it's another Avatar movie, it's another Avatar movie. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, the visuals are what really like sells the the first one, and uh, and it's like it's it's just got to be like visually stunning, of course. <laughs> I think no, what I think is hilarious though is like the first movie is just Avatar, right? And and because of our relationship with Avatar: The Last Airbender, yeah. uh, this movie is like book two, water. Like, like why why is that happening? Why he's just like he's like you yeah I know that the other one is like the elements, but I'm just gonna do all the elements, bro. Yeah. What do you think of that? I'm James Cameron. Fuck you. I'm James Cameron. Like like that's how and it's James, that's James how it Cameron seems. has he has he has a planet sized ego. Yes. So, yes. I mean yes. people, planet, everybody says that about him. Fuck you, so I'm James is, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, he's the king of the world, so um I'm sure I'm sure that he he it's had gonna make, made was that is that intentional? Like, how can it know. not be I'm intentional? Sure. No. Today's, technology, today's technology, he had probably the most, the fastest supercomputer ever um, utilized to make a film, right? Yeah. You know that yes. he spent $25 million on the, if or not there. the fastest supercomputer ever, yeah, one yeah. of them, right? I mean, there's no question he paid for that. Yeah, well, right, right. Yeah, there, I... And this is the ongoing thing. My relationship with Avatar is, yes, it's an interesting story. It's very simple in terms of the overarching, you know. Oh, it's Pocahontas. Film. It's Pocahontas. Yeah, yeah it's right. Pocahontas. It's Fern Gully. It's Dances with Wolves. Yes, it's, you it's know, Last Samurai. It's, it's, all, it's, all of the above. It's kind of, it's yeah. a white savior movie without being a white savior movie, yeah. kind of. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean. It's yeah. it's a it's a simple story well told with interesting visuals. It's gonna make four billion dollars. Yeah, hundred percent. And even I wouldn't place av- the first Avatar in my top twenty favorite movies of all time. Oh yeah, I still, but saw, it, I still saw it three times in the theater. Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. Is he gonna? I just try, went to it. Is he gonna try to, to bring times. the three D movie back? Is it gonna be? No, no. Th- yeah, like I. I I'm really happy that craze like went away. I saw so many bad 3D movies. Oh my god, terrible. Uh, um. Okay, the Pentaveret. So so never watched it. 
I so, watched season. I watched episode one of that. That is painful, dude. Painful. painful. I want. I want. Okay. I want to. I want to talk about something because this is in my brain and I had to get it out. And this is the place to get it out. The pentaverite is a one converse one conversation that that Mike Meyer has as his dad talking about this secret society that rules in so i married an axe murderer it's like his dad is telling his friend about the pentaverate it's it's a secret group that rules the members are the queen the colonel the the uh the the rothschilds and and he he mentions it like in the nineties in this random indie movie that he like decided that. to bring back. I, actually, I, I love movie. so I married an axe. So I married an axe murder is amazing. But like he decided to take that idea and like fast forward it. And it's like, I, I tried to watch it. It is yeah. so dumb. It is, it is so, so brutal. It is it's painful. Pain. And, and like literally Mike Myers is just, he just like says a joke and like pauses for the applause or something, like he's pausing for laughs. He's like that. Um, anyways. Yeah, that came and went. I have noticed. I, I don't watch it. Don't I'm watch like, it. It's so I'm dumb. Not. But I, a weird Austin Powers mindset to the Illuminati. Yes. And it, it's it's so off putting and not funny. It's yes. Not, okay. yeah. uh, Mike Myers may have spent his powder. Uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers on Disney Plus. Now nope. you guys are a little old. To I watch remember. Rescue Rangers every day. I watch Rescue Rangers every day. This is my generation. This okay. This movie is the ultimate nostalgia nod, but it is so weird and like very adult for Disney Plus. And uh, and I was surprised at this level of like adultness but like still kind of disney plus light kind of fair and like really? dark dark but then uh, kind of light disney but like the references and the art and all the it is the level of uh who framed roger rabbit with all the random cartoons that are sprinkled throughout and like the cameos and all the little stuff. It is like an Easter egg, like, like fever dream. Uh, so, so, so watch Chippendales, but do it. Watch it. I was like dumbfounded. Like Hannah and I are like, this isn't a very good movie, but we can't stop watching it. And by the middle part of it, we were like both laughing and having a great time. So it's it, it like it like slow burns you. You're like this is not very good. This is not, but really weird. Like wow. Uh, and I watched Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers and I loved it. So uh, watch. Is gadget is the is gadget in the movie? No, I'm not gonna tell you. No spoilers. Go watch the movie. Wow. Yeah, she's in it. She's in it. Relax. Okay. Of course she's in it. It's Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. You like gadget, huh? That was yours. Gad- gadget was fun. Uh, it was a weird nerd girl who like invented all the stuff. She's a pretty cool character. Hundred percent, she's in there. Uh, an early '90s like TV show. She's like the she's the genius nerd girl who invented everything and saves everybody's life every week. Oh, uh, Andrew, lo- Andrew, Andrew has a thing for her. Yeah, creepy Andrew. Uh, creepy. Love Death Robot season three. I I've never watched. I've watched one episode of that entire series. Not awesome. one. Awesome. awesome, awesome. Love Death and Robot season two. That bug episode, that, is that those space bug episodes, that fucked me up, dude. dude the space bug episode was jacked. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so um, good. So I, good. I will say, here's the thing about, here's the thing is like, it is all like small, short stories. So you can watch them totally out of, you can watch them totally out of order. And that being yeah. said, some of them are much better than others and some are not very good. And, and so, like, there are a few sprinkled throughout that are like, this is very good, this is very bad, this is very good, this is very bad. So, uh, yeah, I thought season three was better than season two. Season two was kind of fine. Yeah. Um, and then and then season three was... Three for was the, solid. Three was solid. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, there are definitely some standout. That that episode of the dancing lady in the in the pond, oh, my God. Jacked that up. is so 
so weird, so weird, but wonderful. Like, yeah, visually not, stunning, visually amazing. Yeah, taking advantage of the art form. Yeah, holy, moly, so good. Yeah, yeah. I love Jack. That was my uh, favorite, my favorite episode. So beautiful and like and, no dialogue, and, barely and, barely any dialogue. Right, right. Brilliant. Yeah. Andrew, uh, definitely watch it. Um, we've gotten a few Thor: Love and Thunder trailers. Uh, are you excited? You guys are. Is Stranger Things on your list? We got to talk. It's Stranger getting there. Things. It's getting there. Okay, let's, let's hold. Let's do a one shot on Stranger Things when the whole season's over. It's over. I, no, do, there's volume no, two. Gonna, no, we should do a part one. A one shot on part one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. so okay. Part one. Okay. Yeah. okay. So Willow trailer. I was really excited about Willow trailer. We had we had like a Disney like announcing all their like stuff. Well, uh, yeah, they had they had Star Wars celebration, and there was a Lucasfilm yeah. so, showcase. Yeah, yeah. Willow oh. TV yeah. show Willow. that I'm super pumped about. I love Willow. Oh, of course, I'll watch it. It is. Yeah. I love Willow. Um, I will absolutely dig into that show. So we're not going to talk about Stranger Things season four right. right now. We're going to do I, a I one. Sh- like that, I I feel like that's a vehicle to give that dude a job. So <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't care. Sorry. I don't care. No. Not that compelling. No. Warwick, Warwick no. Davis, and he has been in other things with like Ricky Gervais, and other, he is a fun actor. Actually, He's good. I like him, but no, nah. no. Okay. Uh. Okay. So we're gonna skip uh, Stranger Things season four. I have a lot to say about that. We're gonna talk about volume that. One. Volume, volume one. Volume one. We're gonna talk about that when. Um, next time i guess obi-wan kenobi one shot we'll do when it's done it's it's we're midway through right now uh no and we're not midway through it's with one episode left one episode, one episode left. right one ep- right uh secrets of dumbledore got dropped on hbo max so i finally watched it that is just unwatchable drivel that is like wow well that movie made me so bad. that movie made me so bad. mad wow it made me mad uh so dumb uh yeah anyways i didn't i didn't react that badly to it i i don't think it was that bad i think it was better than um crimes Crimes of grindelwald Grindelwald. i mean that one was all over the damn place it that one was almost unwatchable for me i think that this one was at least it had more focus and direction yeah crimes crimes is incoherent to me yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, i don't i still know what crimes of grindelwald is about i think the first one is actually kind of fun like it's not great, but I like agree. kind like of fun and. I mean that was cool. Yeah, it it it, it, it was. He's a great character. He's a great character, and it made sort of sense. But yeah. but then the next two have just been so bad, man, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, I I liked Secrets of Grin- Secrets of Dumbledore in the sense that. I don't feel like I wasted time watching it. I legitimately feel like I wasted time watching Crimes of Grindelwald. I don't know what it's about. Yeah. I don't want to go back and rewatch it. If I had like a an afternoon where I had like a wild hair, I would watch Secrets of Dumbledore again. I was talking to Hannah about like why did they make a third one and then I looked up like Crimes of Grindelwald still made like 600 million dollars worldwide and it's like it's Harry like, Potter universe, dude. People are plugged yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah, Harry Potter. It, Chris is yeah doing the right thing. Uh, okay. Uh, the Orville is back. It, we had like a three year hiatus. I'm watching Orville. Love the Orville. I, have I love it. the Orville. It is so fun. Oh man. I, I watched like one episode five years ago. It is it is so goofy. I don't know why I let things go so easily, and then. Uh, I can't watch, uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Like, I try to watch that. Like, this is a comparison a little bit. It's like, I tried to watch Strange New Worlds. I couldn't get through an episode. I love, wow. I, I watch Orville and I love it. I love it. No. Strange New Worlds is great. Yes. No, no. It is, for Star one, Trek. it, for one simple reason, Strange New Worlds is great. Everyone, all of the characters are incredibly likable. Yes. All of them. Why? They are. Why is why is this? Why do they write these characters that are like these tortured souls that are? They're not. To- with, hold your. He's like tort- He's like tortured with all these problems, like, and it's like that's discovery, dude. That's discovery is unwatchable. No, They're dude, tortured. dude. Captain Pike is like the full whole first episode. He's like he realizes he's seen his future, and he like. 
They have to establish an early arc, dude. He's past uh, it. Uh, okay. Uh, give it a chance because he is totally past it. Okay. Yep. Uh, moving on. The Boys season three is happening. I haven't watched the latest episode, but we're enjoying. I didn't even it. hear what you said. The what season three? The boys. boy. The boys season three. No. Never watched a single episode of that show. Whoa! That's, you haven't watched. Oh my show. god! It's so entertaining and it's stressful. So I, entertaining dude. and stressful. Yes. I get stressed out watching that show. I love it. I love that. It's. So I love good. it too, but it stresses me out because. Any, I mean, Homelander especially, that dude could murder everyone. Yes. He could everyone. just decide to murder everyone at murder. any time. It's yeah. so fun. Like, watching this Superman yeah. that has all this power. and Every not... time he's on the screen, I'm like, I can't I can't handle it. My, my blood pressure goes up. <laughs> anyway, so I'm enjoying that. I can't believe you haven't watched any of it, Andrew. You should give it a chance. Oh, Gen yeah. Gen I don't have, for, hold on. Yeah. Let me talk. Okay. I don't I didn't have a Prime Video account when ah. it started. Ah. So it things that are on Amazon Prime and Hulu go because right. I don't have those accounts. So I I can't I don't I can't I don't have I have I have six streaming services as it is and I barely keep up with content. I mean sure. adding two more yeah. the boys I am disinterested in. Just the only thing that piques my interest about season three is the fact that Jensen Ackles is. Involved I, I was that's it was that's what I was just gonna say. Hold to you. on, it's like come to watch Love season him three from yeah. Supernatural, yeah. but I am disinterested in that. Like when people describe Homelander and what you guys are describing to me right now, I don't. It, for me, it's trouble for me, and I hate to say blanket statements like this, but the fact that he sounds so despicable makes me not want to engage with the show. He's just such does. a, he's such a and weird I a, character. And, yeah. I, and I don't have a problem with villain stories. Like the Sopranos, incredibly compelling. I loved it. Tony Soprano. Yeah. Yeah. On the face of it, he is a despicable human. The same with, you know, Mad Men and Don Draper. He lies to everyone. He is a thief and a criminal basically his whole life, but he is incredibly compelling. So despicable characters aren't necessarily like just, I rule them out. But when Homelander is described and what I know about the show, I am disinterested. All right. That's all. All right. I mean, okay. You're, I, I hear what you're saying, but, man, it's good. It's real good. Uh, and I'm Ms. missing out. I mean, are you guys watching Miss Marvel? Yes. So yes. fun. Uh, like, uh, I'm enjoying it. it it's so I very much so. I've only seen episode one. It's got episode some, two gets better. Like, episode two gets better. Like I, the end, man, the end really like, whoo, where is this going? It's well, fun. And I, I love the very intentional them embracing this very niche culture of yeah. American Pakistani culture, American Pakistani Muslim culture yes. as like, as Kamala Khan's origin. Like she comes from this world. It's an insular immigrant culture in New Jersey, but it is so interesting to me, and it's done with so much affection. The way the 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 storytelling is done with so much affection for this particular culture in Jersey. I love yeah. it. I love every single moment with her parents. I, I, mean, we're, I love we're, her brother. We're only two, two episodes friend. in, so I mean, we'll see where it goes. Uh, but, but so far, I am I am in love with the world. Kamala yeah. Khan, great. It's pretty her, cool. It's pretty cool, and 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 it's got some style. That that it reminds me a lot of uh, Spider Man into the Spider, into the Spider Verse. Yes, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. It's got this like extra, but extra like bit that's happening around the world, and uh, yeah, very teenagery and and fun. And the style yeah. the style is cool. Um, Fabulous. Fabulous. Have you, have either of you watched Severance? No. Oh no. my God, Severance is amazing! Holy shit, you would love Severance, Christopher. Holy yeah. shit! What's uh, it on? What's what's it on? It's on Apple. Okay, Apple I have an Apple. Yeah, okay. dude, watch. Se okay, I will tell you this going in. There's a lull mid season that you're like, where is this going? But the end, just stay with it. It is amazing. Sever I mean, Severance is incredible. Like, oh yeah really well-made unique show that is different than anything you've ever seen that asks some very interesting questions 
about life and humanity and like freaking weird and freaking dark and most of the direct most of the episodes are directed by ben stiller bizarre bizarre show watch it watch it watch it i don't and i don't want to know you don't have to tell me patrick i don't need a three sentence pitch i have heard awesome things about this show and i have absolutely zero clue what it's about you should want don't 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 want oh, read anything. Saying. Don't watch I have anything. No clue. That what is this that is the most amazing part. Like I knew a little bit going in because someone had to sell me on it. Go in blind. What? Just watch the first episode and you'll be hooked. Just watch. Okay. Yeah. Um, Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna stand by it. I've Great seen movie. it. Tw- I've seen it twice in the theater. I want to go a third time. Second it is time. the Second most. Time fun i've had at the movies in a long time I, every, I, every I, moment i love. I just lost respect for both of you because wow. i thought it was so bad it is it is <laughs> check your brain at the door entertainment it so is, it is check your brain at the door entertainment is right 100 uh, check your brain at the door entertainment there's is. A, there's a place for that, dude. Absolutely. I, I here's what I'll say. Okay, I, I'm being a little harsh. It's better than the first one. Yeah. Oh no, the first one is amazing. Uh, okay, one. okay. This is this is what I gotta say about Top Gun Maverick. I gotta I gotta like use my words sparingly because I know you guys are gonna come after me. But it is way too. I hate this common thing that they've been doing these days with like Ghostbusters Afterlife. The Force Awakens, uh, where it's like sequels to movies that came out a long time ago that are like like legacy sequels, legacy sequels. Where, hey, you remember what happened in the first movie? Hey, hey, remember that scene from the first movie? Hey, remember that song from the first movie? Hey, you remember that that mo that line from the first movie? That this movie does that way too much, and it's not its own thing. And it bothers me to such an extent that I can't enjoy the goofy, like, fun that this movie is. It is incredibly fun to watch. But also, I love the visual styling of Tony Scott uh, from the first one. It's got this cool color with, like, black, really dark, like, silhouette shots. Um, really interesting, like, look to it. And this seems just like a generic action movie to me. And I and I think that first one is unique. And I think a few years from now, everybody's going to forget this movie even exists. Like, that's that's how I, I don't... I specifically disagree about the look of the film. I, I actually like... I kind of like the straightforward nature of Joseph Kaczynski and how he directs things. I... Yeah. I and the, you can... And... You can actually, it's very well structured in terms of its aerial action sequences. It's, I, I, all of it, it worked on multiple levels for me. Uh, And I'll say it's, oh my God, so much more, the flying is so much more immersive than Maverick than the first one. And every time I watch the first one, there, I notice all the terrible mistakes in the flying. Mm-hmm. And the bad shots and the breaking of continuity shit. All of that in the flying is they repeated shots. They're not, it doesn't look like they're in an area where they should be. It's, it's, the flying is kind of bad in the first one. The immersive flying in Maverick is amazing. They shot that shit when they're actually in the fighter jets. Yes. That's incredible to me. I mean, I mean and it, the story, and uh, so I, I, I'm with you, Patrick, on when legacy sequels overdo yeah. the, hey, this is a, remember this cool moment. Um, I thought, I thought it's totally different story. They're not training; they're actually on a mission. Mm-hmm. The mission at the end is so stupid in the first movie. Honestly, when you think about it, yeah. it's super, yeah. it's super dumb. Yep. So this is actually the third, a, the third act of top of the first Top Gun terrible. is stupid. It, yeah. it, 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 so um, yeah. maybe the, maybe I just have like I saw it when I was young. Let me finish my, oh, let me sorry, finish sorry, my sorry. Sorry. legacy um, legacy yeah. sequel. I'm with you on the over, but I thought those moments were people love nostalgia. 
And people love, like right. us, we all like the first movie, yeah. right? People love the callback to those iconic nostalgia moments, the volleyball scene, right? the, the playing the piano and singing, the him, bar scene, him, all him, of that. Him finding the, the, to, the F... Uh, what is it, F-14 yeah. Tomcat and flying it? Sorry. I don't, don't that dispute is, that it's ridiculous, it, people, but it's so fun. I love that. And I think it's not over... I don't... I, my reaction was it's not overdone. It was sprinkled in as a nice reminder of tug at the heartstrings. We understand that these are the moments you love about the first movie and we're going to repeat it, yes. But also, it's like that... It's like I found it to be... Very endearing. Yes, I see. I, 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 I honestly, I honestly think it's Tom Cruise's best performance in a movie in a long time. Wow. Like, I mean, I love Fallout. Uh, that's surprising. I, I agree. I think he's good. He's good. And he's good in all the Mission Impossible movies. But he, he like had, he the actual, actual remote. yeah, he has to, he gets. There's some real vulnerable moments when he's talking about Rooster and he's talking about Ice and he's interacting with Penny. Yeah, the, yeah. the moments, the whole scene with Val Ice Kilmer, Man Val is Kilmer, really, he is really, really like vulnerable and open about how sad and how he's felt he's made a lot, so many so mistakes. I, I'm going to nominate along those lines. I'm non nominating Miles Teller and Jennifer Connelly for the not co not ugly. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> okay. Holy, are those people attractive? Holy yes. yeah, they're both incredibly attractive. Yeah. So I have this I have I this hate on these with mustaches like that, but that yeah. dude is unbelievably attractive in yes. that movie. Miles Teller is very good looking. Yeah. And I, I so this is just a joke that I tweeted about it, but it's been on if you Tom Cruise is perpetually forty years old, even though he's pushing sixty. Yeah. He just looks forty, he looks young, he's fit. His leading ladies in his films are always 20 plus years younger than him right. chronologically right he's probably he's probably an alien he's got scientology super yeah magic, the thetans, making man, him young the, the thetans are are Seriously. out of him so and, he's he's you know. he's gonna be he's gonna look 40 until he dies probably <laughs> even though he looks significantly older than he did when he was 26 anyway but jennifer Connolly awesomely is an age appropriate leading lady for him he is 59 years old she is 51 I and mean, that is how good she looks age appropriate um, 10 you know eight years so i i guess sure he, i mean ashton is eight years younger than me uh, uh, yeah yeah sure okay Don't, yeah age keep, appropriate keep, keep keep saying that to yourself dude no, I will. <laughs> Dude, I do. I'm very lucky every day. But think about it. Tom Cruise in I'm Fallout. Very lucky. Love it. I'm is, very lucky Rebecca, every day. Rebecca Ferguson, <laughs> Rebecca Ferguson is 20 years younger. Or, oh, or yeah. like 15 years younger. Oh, yeah. Than... And, and what's her name in the third one is 20 years uh, younger than him. Oh, Michelle, uh, Michelle Monaghan or whatever Michelle is 20 Monaghan. years younger than, yes, yes. than Tom Cruise. Uh, yeah. Here's what I'll say because I also, like, I don't want to beat this to death, but um, I think... The music in the first one is kind of classically awesome. And I love music. You know, I love movie music. And I'm sorry, Lady Gaga is not as good as the Righteous Brothers. I was wanted, I wanted the Righteous Brothers at the end of that movie so bad. And they gave me Lady Gaga. And I yeah, wanted... Ladies. I, I, spit, I spit on the, the, the concrete outside. Like, I was like so... I was just I, like... I, I will say this, Patrick. Though for there are certain scenes, there are certain scenes in that movie where the score is fantastic. The specifically, I've been listening, re-listening to it this week. The scene where he's test flying the scramjet. Awesome. The music that movie in that, is for, awesome. that three that three three minutes of score when he's test flying is fan. Fantastic. I need okay. to listen to that. I'll, I'll go. I'll go re-listen it, to it. Christopher, you literally you if you listen to it while you're doing cardio or running. It literally, it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. It will push you up a hill, dude. I, it is great. Movie I score. will say, like you know, it's not a bad movie. It's just I, I wanted so much more from it. I wanted it to be something unique, and it's just, it just, 
it just hit me wrong. It hit me wrong, and I, I don't, I can't really express. You're it in well. the, you're in the five percent of people. Who I know. Saw the movie that didn't like it. I it know. Overwhelmingly, I'm, people are pos- have a positive reaction. I'm, I'm real. Dad dumb. cried when I took. I went with Daniel, and I went with Dad. Dad cried at least once. Well, I think. Well, Dad, he Dad, up. Dad's a bit he, of a crier. That makes sense. Okay, he is. I he had I such. Teared up, I teared up at it. Yeah, such like his. I could feel kind of like Dad's like heart kind of swelling. Movie. He felt he had such so good much. vibes, and it, and it builds on again. It's the nostalgia factor, dude. It's not overwhelming, but it touches those points, and then ice, ice dying. All of that is is poignant, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I guess so. Yeah, it worked. It worked for me on every level. Okay, we got through my list, and it's fifty minutes of recording. We did it. Well, we did we it, did. boys. Rapid fire show we're, again. We're, we're back. We're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> We got. We are back. Uh, gaming, I want to mention. We have a gaming moment. Gaming moment. Oh sure. Game, no, yeah. No. I. Uh, oh. I. I, I fired up uh, Halo Infinite. I am playing through the campaign again. I have not fired up in three months. My turn up. Andrew, we should co-op the campaign. Yeah, it's yeah. a co-op available. Not yet. Okay, when co-op's available, I'll absolutely play through it. Yeah, I, let's uh, co-op on heroic. Yeah. A couple things I want to mention. Yeah. That I've engaged with in the, just the last week. Uh. For, you guys haven't watched this show, but I am digging on it big time. It's season three of For All Mankind is on oh, Apple yeah. Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alternate... We're gonna, I think we're going to start that tonight. You sh- it's I love that series. Joel Kinnaman is my dude. And Sh- Sh- Chantel Van Santen as the co- like she's the co-lead, his great, ex-wife great now. Show. They're both great. very compelling. The story they're telling this season about trying to get to Mars. It's set in like 1992. Are you hearing this? So I'm getting a monsoon right now. I can't hear that. No, we can't hear it. It's crazy. It smelled like it smelled like rain here in Phoenix. Wow. I think we got we got a little bit of rain. It wasn't that hot today. It was only like 95, and it's humid. Wow. Uh, So for all mankind, season three that started, I love that show. Uh, So this we're kind of late to the party on this, Ashton and I, but we found last night in or two nights ago, inventing Anna. Oh yeah, on Netflix. Tana watched that. Yeah, yeah. So we are sucked in. It is an interesting, like, mystery slash character slash crime story. We're digging on it. We it's are like very a scam much scam artist, right? Something like that. And it's it's based on a real person and a right. real scam that they ran. Why do you like that? A real life despicable person, but then the boys, which has characters that are like good and awesome in it, oh, who are not on. the main character. She's not. She's, she's not the main, main character. Char- she's okay. Not. Her story, she it's told through flashbacks like the crime, like sh- this reporter is investigating right. her, okay, right? And the flashbacks of her scheme and what she's trying to do is told by people she interacted with. And there's some first person stuff with her, but the main character and the story, the driving the story, is the reporter who's investigating her. Because yeah. at the beginning, the very first episode, she gets arrested and she's arraigned for these crimes. and the fact, you know, the fact that the interesting part of it is, is that she's 27. She really, did, you know, she set herself up in like this very elite section of New York society. And she scammed these like rich white dudes out of money. And she comes from nowhere. And she's like a mystery to everybody, even in her life. Like people who thought she was like, she is like, there's this main character. There's this character they're following. Who's this young street savvy black woman from New York who works in a hotel that she stayed, this woman stayed at for months. They became friends. She's very loyal to her, but it eventually unwinds that she knows nothing about her. Legitimately nothing. She knows her first name and then things start to unravel. It's, it's a very, it's an interesting story to tell about people when you're interacting with some, I made this point last night and it's a kind of the thing it's, it's honestly, for me, it's the thing about Trump that because he's so blatantly disgusting but because <laughs> he has no shame. Yeah. People can buy into him. The character in this story has absolutely no shame. She believes every single thing she says until she is completely caught and she has no ability. People will believe so much about somebody if the person believes it about themselves. So she's just selling herself all the time and projecting yeah. this image all the time. And people accept it because when you're dealing with someone who has no shame at all, 
you just kind of get sucked in because everybody feels shame all the time. So when you are not an embarrassed person and you're around people who feel embarrassment all the time, you can't help but be fascinated and like charmed. I, so I, 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 I'm not going to watch this show. I, I watched a couple of clips with Hannah and I, I, I have no desire to watch a show about this person. I, 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 there's no curiosity in me. I think she's despicable. I think she's despicable. A real life despicable because it's real life makes me not want to watch it more. Like, okay. That's totally fine. It's like, it's like, it's like because this person exists and got away with it for so long makes me sick for humanity. Like the 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 reminder of how like awful is are did your lights just flash, Christopher, or is that just lightning? I, we're getting lightning. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Uh, okay. Before Pat, okay. Chris loses power. Yeah. Let's wrap this up. yeah. Uh, do you have any trivia for us, Andrew? I do. Oh. Trivia is Tom Cruise themed. <laughs> okay. So Top Gun Maverick is Tom Cruise's top grossing film ever. Really. And he had a huge career with a ton of action films and everything. Tom, Top Gun Maverick is now the top grossing film of Tom Cruise's career. What are the next three top grossing films that Tom, top, let's say four. So it's top five. Number one is Top Gun Maverick. Okay. What are the next four top Mission, grossing films Mission Tom Impossible, Cruise has ever Fallout, made? yeah. Mission Possible Fallout. Okay. Uh... Crap. It's got to be like another Mission Impossible, right? Like what the first one, Mission Impossible One. Okay. Ghost, uh, Pro- Ghost, Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol. That's one in the desert, right? Yeah, I feel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's another like really crazy off book Tom Cruise movie? I mean, what's the one where he was uh, on uh, planet Earth? He was a clone. Ob- Oblivion. 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 Which is a very good movie. I, like I don't know if that reaches to top same, five. Though. S- same director as Top Gun Maverick, also. Joseph Kaczynski, yeah. Um, also, that director directed Tron Legacy. Yeah, which I like, even though like that, look, I like that movie, re- yeah. rewatching That's... rewatching that though. Uh, what's his name? Uh, doesn't look very good. Uh, young. Okay. So what is Cruz? Cruz is. I mean, what what movies does he make? He makes the Mission Impossible Mission movies. Impossible. <laughs> And top and Top Gun, is that it? Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So number five, War of the Worlds. Ah, oh. with Steven Spielberg, a Steven Spielberg no, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Number five is War of the Worlds. Number uh, four, Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. Ah. Mm. Number three, Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and the and number two, which was number one until like last week. Because it ju- Top Gun Maverick just passed it, Mission Impossible Fallout. It made seven hundred and ninety million dollars. I mean, Fallout. that's a good movie, but it's like, it's a, man, I have been rewatching the really movie. So it's, good, a, it's I a paid really for Paramount. Movie. I paid for Paramount Plus, and uh, Mission Impossible movies are all Paramount. So yeah. I've been re- I rewatched last weekend, uh, Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, and Fallout. They are really good we're, action movies. Hannah hasn't seen any of those movies, so we're about to do that in anticipation oh. of Mission Impossible 7. That trailer, we didn't even talk about that, too. There's a tra- Dead Reckoning. Yeah. Dead Reckoning. Part 1. <laughs> so He's going to retire the, because he's going to be legitimately retirement age when the movie co- when the, both the movies come out. I mean, they've already he's shot retiring they, his Ethan Hunt character. They they've already like shot both of them. Like they got to yeah. I mean, eight? They're gonna have eight of these damn movies? Okay. Yeah. Dead uh, Reckoning is a two-parter, dude. It's back. It's a two-parter. Yeah. And yeah. Both two and a half hours long. The only one yeah. that is the only one that is like kind of bad is uh, the second one. The second one's not very good. John, yeah, John Woo. John Woo's Mission Impossible Two is kind of kind of meh. Kind of meh. That is, that's painful. it's definitely a that it's definitely a John Woo movie. movie. Yeah. 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 Woo style. Uh, the Woo style. Uh, 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 slow motion gunplay is ridiculous. Yeah. With the uh, thank yeah. you, Andrew. If you'd like to help Andrew with his trivia, his his email is king of the north fifty two at gmail dot com. Follow uh, email the podcast brothers geek podcast at uh, gmail dot com uh, brothers geek dot com. 
Brothers Geek do stuff on Instagram, Brothers underscore Geek on Twitter, BrothersGeek.com for all your stuff. We're on Spotify. We're on we're on uh, iTunes. Thanks for listening. We're on YouTube. All the things. All the things. You can come watch us on YouTube. See our faces if you like. So as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, mm. uh, COVID is still very much a thing because two of your brother's geek have had COVID in the past <laughs> two weeks. Yes. So please get vaccinated and yes. continue to wear a mask. And you're both vaccinated and you both recovered fine because you were vaccinated. Yes. And boosted and boosted. And oh yeah. Boosted. No, I, I got my, I got my triple vax hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. And I, yeah, I feel fine. I totally recovered. Yep. Awesome. Do, do it. Uh, great advice. Uh, yeah. we, we support science on this channel. We support, you yes, know, we, we support science fiction and we support science. That's so. right. That's right. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, well, I'm happy. Uh, and we have to shout out to all the fathers, right? Fa- oh Patrick, yeah. Too. Father's my Day two, tomorrow. Father's my two brothers Father's on this tomorrow. podcast. Happy Father's Day to both of you. Thank you. I'm a father. I have never seen Patrick with his child, but I'm sure he is a wonderful father. Christopher, you're a decent father. I know (laughs) your three daughters very well. They they survived. They made it to (laughs) semi-adulthood. Kind of. Kind kind of survived. (laughs) They're wonderful. Your children are wonderful, so I know you're a good father. They're good. good. All credit to their mother. All credit to their mother. Oh, I mean, I tell that we'll to her all. We'll celebrate dad tomorrow. We'll celebrate Absolutely. dad tomorrow. 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, we're out.